doesn't this look real sleek? Well, Oppo phones generally tend to and the Reno7 series isn't any different. Probably has good optics too, but does it? Well, let's get the unboxing part out of the way and take a close look. My name's Ash, you're watching C4 Retech, and if you do end up liking what you see here, subscribe, turn on notifications, hit that bell icon if you haven't yet, and let's get started. This is the box that Reno7 Pro comes in. Let's take it out of that sleeve, open it up. We are greeted by this black insert, which contains the SIM ejector tool, some regular leaflets, a TPU case, and that's followed by the main event, the Reno7 Pro itself. Well, the plastic just came off. Let me get that sticker off too. The back does really look nice. So let's set this aside for the time being. And what else we have is a 65 watt SuperVOOC charger and a USB Type-A to Type-C cable. With this quick shot of the Reno7 Pro with its case on, let's get to actually taking a closer look at this phone. With the design here, it seems like Oppo's designers got together in a room and started thinking, what's cool now? Well, glass, obviously, etchings, multiple colors, texture to the back, metal, ceramic, and then they couldn't really choose what to go with, so, well, they went with everything. This back is glass, it's got micro etchings to it. This gives it a textured feel. When it reflects light, it gives off pretty much every color you can think of. And then to add flair, they went with some streaks to mimic shooting star trails. And that is not everything. The camera array here, it's covered by metal and ceramic below that. And if you thought we were done, not just yet, because hey, you just cannot go wrong with LEDs, right? Realistically, this shouldn't work. There's way too much going on here, but somehow they've managed to bring all this together in this nice little package. And this phone looks premium, it feels nice in hand. And for the first time in a long, long time, a non all out flagship phone has warped me with its design. So guys, this still might not be for everybody. So Oppo does offer a starlight black, which is a little more stealthy, not so in your face. Now, regardless of the color, the 7 Pro is very light. It weighs in at under 180 grams. It's also, if you've not heard Oppo say it a million times till now, it also happens to be the slimmest Renault phone they've ever made, coming in at under 7.5 millimeters of thickness. Given it's paired with the 6.5 inch display, it also feels very easy to use single-handed. You know, to show them selfies. Typically, Oppo pays a lot of attention to their selfie shooters and given that they're calling this their portrait expert, they've gone with competent hardware. This here is a Sony IMX709 sensor. It's a 32 megapixel sensor that supports quad binning and it does something different. Now, generally, when we look at selfie cameras, the subpixels are RGGB, that's red, green, green, and blue. But over here, it's RGBW, red, green, blue, and white. So Oppo claims this should allow for more detailed selfies, more light in. And as you can see, the selfies were great. They're also using another technique here called DOL HDR. This stands for Digital Overlap HDR, and it's something we've seen on rear cameras, the primaries in the past, but now they've brought this technique over to the selfie camera. Basically, when you shoot a selfie or when you're trying to shoot HDR images, what happens is two images are shot in quick succession and they are superimposed. Now with current hardware, these two images are taken very quickly one after the other. So we don't notice a lot of distortion or blurriness as a result, but it could still be technically possible. But over here with the digital overlap HDR tech, what happens is different exposures are read directly from the sensor data, which means both images are taken simultaneously. In theory, at least there shouldn't be any blurriness as a result. Now, HDR did seem great, but this is something I'm gonna have to test a lot more before confirming how well it works. So we're gonna have to wait for the full review for that. If you do wanna watch a full review of this, let me know in the comments below. If you guys wanna see it, I will try to get it done. We then have our regular bokeh controls alongside bokeh flare to get those lights to the back to pop. This can also be done with video, but like with most bokeh video options we've seen in the past, it's pretty hit or miss. Given all the selfie focus, my thought was maybe they compromised on the rear cameras, but seemingly not. The primary here is a 50 megapixel Sony IMX766. It's a 1 by 1.56 inch sensor, gives you two micron sized pixels when you quad bin. The images turned out pretty detailed with on point colors. The dynamic range was also pretty impressive. Just look at the sky in these shots. The 8 megapixel ultra wide is also decent. And like with almost every brand, Oppo's also gone with a third macro sensor just to make up numbers to say, hey, we've got triple cameras here. So sweet build, excellent optics, but what about the internals? Well, here we have MediaTek's Diamond City 1200 Max running the show. While MediaTek's naming can get confusing, generally I find it easier when I compare it to something Qualcomm to see where it actually falls on the pecking order. 
And this one compares to the Snapdragon 870, so it's a pretty solid performer, in theory at least. And if that does translate to real day-to-day -day performance, I feel Oppo could have a really good overall package here with the Reno7 Pro. Now, other specs include uh, 12 gigs of DDR4X RAM, uh, 256 gigs of two-lane UFS 3.1 storage, part of which can be used as virtual memory if needed. After all, it's running on ColorOS 12, and we've seen this on other phones. Talking about ColorOS, this year is built on top of Android 11. And the software is frankly a little bit disappointing, at least my first impressions, because there's way too much bloat. Oppo's phones are generally priced, you know, they are premium phones. If you're gonna charge a premium, the least you can do is at least not throw in so much bloat. But for what it's worth, it can all be uninstalled. Even first party apps can be disabled. So it cleans up quite nice, but I would have preferred all this bloat to not be there in the first place. The performance though felt top notch. We have a 90 Hertz AMOLED panel that definitely makes a difference. It makes everything feel very smooth. Talking about the display, it has HDR10 plus support and gets bright enough to not pose issues outdoors. It even happens to be covered by Corning's Gorilla Glass 5. Okay, let's now take a quick look around the phone. The sides are chamfered metal. The power key with that Reno accent is present to the right. There's a noise cancelling mic up top. The volume keys are present to the left. And to the bottom, we get a single speaker, USB Type-C port, the primary microphone, and a dual SIM tray. Sadly, no support for micro SD or a headphone jack. It's worth mentioning that only one of these two SIM slots can take 5G. Uh, well, that's a little bit of a bummer. The phone does support 11 5G bands, so at least we are moving on past the age of one or two 5G band support and calling it a 5G phone. So that's that's something I'm happy about. Oh yeah, forgot to mention, this phone has a 4500 milliamp hour battery. The 65 watt charger should be able to get it from zero to 100 in about, a, in about half an hour. Now this is the part where we generally talk price, but I am covering this under embargo before the launch, so I have no idea what the pricing is gonna be. Once I have information on that, I'll leave it in the description below. I will pin it in a comment, so let me know what you think about the pricing and what you feel would have been a fair price for this phone. Uh, so that's pretty much it for this quick little unboxing and hands-on. As always, thumbs up, thumbs down based on whatever you felt about the video. Subscribe, turn on notifications, hit that bell icon if you haven't yet. And thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, my name's Ash, you've been watching C4 Retech, and I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day.